Hi, I'm Frank Kluznick. As part of the Fall 2019 Cyber Physical Systems Security course, I'm going to present a summary of a peer-reviewed paper titled On False Data Injection Attacks Against Railway Traction Power Systems. Throughout this presentation, I will refer to traction power systems as TPSs. The material I will cover includes a shout out to the authors, an executive summary, we'll briefly talk about two TPS accidents, I'll provide some additional perspectives, we'll then talk about the characteristics of TPSs, the threat model, attack methods covered in the paper, the primary attack detection, the secondary attack detection, the simulations used to validate the theories of the paper, and then I'll provide a brief conclusion. I'd like to state up front that the material I'm presenting represents an overview of the actual paper. The authors of the paper provided extensive mathematical modeling to prove their theories, and there isn't sufficient time in this assignment to cover that aspect of the paper. If you are interested in the modeling, I highly recommend you take a look at the paper to get more in-depth details. I also hope you enjoy this presentation as much as I enjoyed reviewing the paper and getting an understanding of the vulnerability TPS systems represent today. I'd like to give a shout out to the five authors of this paper and the four schools they represent. This paper was initially presented at the 46th Annual Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers International Federation for Information Processing International Conference on Dependable Systems and Networks in France on June 2016. It was hailed as the first paper of its kind that focused on TPS systems. Uh, there's a link on this uh, slide if you're interested in the paper. And for those of you who are not familiar with the IFIP, it's a global organization designed for researchers and professionals working in the field of information and communication technologies that enables them to conduct research, develop standards, and promote information sharing. This is near and dear to my heart because that's what I do for my day job. So this, why, this is a very interesting conference and a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, relevant papers are presented there annually. This paper took a look at false data injection attacks against railway traction power systems, specifically on direct current powered trains. And the focus of the paper was on voltage, current, and position sensor data. They evaluated two different use cases, an efficiency attack, which would alter the train's optimization for power consumption, and a safety attack that could mislead the train's local voltage to exceed safety thresholds. The paper also proposed some counteractions that involve a global attack detection system with a primary bad data detector and a secondary attack detector. And we'll take a look at those in more detail later on in the paper. The authors uh, then conducted extensive simulations using realistic running profiles of trains to verify that the TPS setup was vulnerable to these FDI attacks and that these attacks can be detected effectively by their proposed global monitoring approach. The paper cited two accidents associated with TPS malfunctions, one in 2014 in Moscow, one in 2015 in Singapore. The pictures on this slide depict those accidents. The Moscow Metro derailment injured 160 people and killed 24. This accident was attributed to a, a switch that was incorrectly installed two months prior to the accident in conjunction with excessive speed at the time of the accident. The 2015 Singapore system-wide metro service disruption involved two events over a 13-day period during peak rush hour. The average daily ridership on the Singapore metro was 3.3 million people. The image on the lower 
right of the slide depicts people waiting in line to board the several hundred buses that were brought online to move the people in lieu of the train. This accident was very interesting as it was caused when a train stopped at a particular stretch of the track where the main line electrical wires were immediately adjacent to the depot electrical wires. The two sets of electrical wires had very different voltages and currents running through them at the time. So because the train stopped at this location with a load in that area, it caused electrical arcing across the two systems because of the voltage differences, and it caused the wires to melt. And that in turn took the system offline completely. On this slide, I wanted to provide some additional perspective. I wanted to specifically tie uh, the material that I'm going to talk about back to our coursework. So the illustration here shows that electric trains and their supporting uh, signals and substations and switches are all tied back to the electrical power grid, which we've been talking about throughout the semester. Beyond that, some statistics that I found interesting were that in 2006, 25% of the world rail network was electrified. And more surprising to me that 50% of all rail transport was carried by electric train. And then not as surprising to me, of course, was the, the ranking uh, in terms of a country, China, Russia, India, Germany, uh, Japan, and France, and the amount of, of uh, electric rail network that they had in place. So I thought this was relevant. On this slide, in I this wanted, slide, to, provide I wanted to provide a little additional perspective to specifically and to tie this, uh, the material, material that I'm going to back, talk about to back to our coursework. coursework. So, so the, the illustration here shows how the electric trains, the electric trains and are dependent on the electrical power and stations and switches. Not just the trains themselves, to electrical power but the station rooms, the signaling semester. machine, Beyond switches, that, statistics that transformers, it all ties back to the power grid. Of the, world the other significant piece here is the fact that 25% of the world rail, rail network by electric is, was electrified And then not as surprising, six, was the, and the 50 the ranking, of all rail uh, transport of countries China, carried by electric Russia, train. Germany, uh, Japan, and, and then France, the and list below the in terms of, of countries uh, in 2012, how they ranked for electrified rail networks. On this slide, I wanted to talk about the characteristics of a TPS system. A basic DC TPS model leverages motor on the train to both accelerate and to decelerate the train. This is depicted in the image in the lower right-hand side where there's a station. There's two trains, one running, one decelerating. The decelerating train is providing power back into the electrical system while the running train is consuming power at the same time. This introduces a complex dynamics in terms of trying to balance the electrical grid in these systems because trains are dynamically both a load or an electrical power generation source for the entire grid. And as a result, this causes a constantly changing power network topology and shifting electrical parameters. There are two fundamental safety controls in play here that are discussed in the paper. One is an overcurrent control, and this is for trains that are running or accelerating. And then there is a squeeze control, which comes into play when trains are either decelerating or braking. And we'll talk more about those in the upcoming slides. Now, the other image on this slide on the lower left-hand side shows the real basic overview of what the, one of these trains look like. So there's an overhead wire which carries the electricity, a pantograph, which is the mechanism by which the electricity comes off the wire into the motor controller in the car, and then the motors in this instance are actually down at the wheels. And again, the motor controller and the wheels both are used to accelerate and to decelerate the train. The title of this side, Threat Model, is completely accurate given the context for this paper. However, the content on this slide is also 
a list of assumptions that were the entering arguments for the authors of this paper when they developed their theories. So in developing their theories, they assumed the attacker had accurate knowledge of the targeted system. They also assumed that the attacker had read access to the current system state information. And the attacker must have the ability to corrupt or to change the voltage, current, and position data locally at the train. Now, we know systems normally rely on only local safety measures, those overcurrent and squeeze controls I mentioned earlier. That's very typical. Uh, we know from experience and what we've learned in this course that information can be leaked from a compromised operations center fairly easily. We also know that unauthorized access from analog sensors can be made available via electronic magnetic interference and that measurement devices are vulnerable to Trojan and infected with malware. So all of that is possible and valid. And then finally, uh, I throw this in just for the math side of the house, uh, they used uh, Kirchhoff's circuit laws for their voltage and their current calculations. And I, I threw a couple images in on, on the slide here in case you're not familiar with those. The attacks studied in the paper were either efficiency or safety attacks. An efficiency attack is where you change the voltage to either introduce an increase or decrease in power that's available to the trains. And the idea here is to degrade the power efficiency across the entire system. Simple as that. The safety attack, on the other hand, is an attempt to change the voltage, current, or position data locally that will cause the voltages at the TPS nodes to exceed safety limits and thereby take out some of the equipment or prevent a train from stopping or burning out transformers, motor controllers, motors themselves, et cetera. The diagram on this slide was excerpted from the paper itself and represents the base model that they used where you had two substations. You've got, in simplified here, uh, a train that was tractioning, meaning it was running, a train that was regenerating, meaning it was in the braking mode. And then uh, for their mathematical equations, uh, they added the different areas of resistance, the voltage line setting. And, and their mathematical calculations are based on these, uh, th this diagram. So far, we briefly talked about traction-powered systems, how they are tied and dependent on the electrical grid. We discussed their design, characteristics, talked about the threat model, assumptions used by the authors of this paper as a basis for their proposal. Uh, we discussed uh, two vulnerabilities that are currently present in uh, local safety features, overcurrent and squeeze controls, and that's the efficiency and safety attacks. This particular slide presents the author's proposal that false data injection on traction-powered systems can be detected through a, a global monitoring system. And what they developed and propose is that there is a pre-computed state estimation table of expected voltage and current measurements for a given position. They also make the presumption that sensor data is going to be sent from trains or local nodes to a central TPS monitoring facility periodically. They don't discuss the periodicity or the location of that uh, TPS monitor data collection but it, it's not particularly relevant at this point. And their approach is to compare the sensor data to their state estimation table and then employ a bad data detection algorithm that they developed to determine if a false data injection attack is occurring. As a secondary backup, they develop an additional attack detection algorithm, which is also employed in the process of determining was there a false data injection attack or not. 
The diagrams below illustrate the state estimation table. They also show the configuration of their simulation, their experiment, in that there would be trains, multiple nodes, sending the data into some central data collection point through the communications network. Once the data comes in, it would be compared to the state estimation table. The bad data detection algorithm would be run against it. If it failed, they'd go into attack mitigation. If it passes the BDD, then the secondary attack detection algorithm is run against the data. And if that fails, there's attack mitigation. And if not, then the train continues in operation. And this, in essence, is their overall approach and recommendation to detecting false data injection attacks. The authors of the paper employed a secondary attack detection because the BAD algorithm is only a single point in time evaluation. And they discovered in their modeling and simulation that this can miss some attacks especially if the position data is compromised. So the SAD algorithm, or the secondary attack detection, was to develop to monitor and validate the position of the train over time and thereby catch any attacks that might be missed by the BAD algorithm. OK, so we are armed with an approach. We have a pre-computed state estimation table. We have a bad data detection algorithm. We have a secondary attack detection algorithm. We're going to run some simulations. I refer to them as desktop analysis. Uh, in order to do this and come up with a realistic uh, running train profiles, uh, they use the diagram on the left as their use case, where we have uh, two westbound and two eastbound trains four substations, and the chart on the right shows the input data, the realistic data, whereby the uh, simulation was set up such that the uh, when the power demand is negative, the regeneration capacity is positive and vice versa, and they use these simulations to uh, validate the bad data detection algorithm and the secondary attack detection algorithm. So they were able, and again, they used extensive uh, mathematical calculations to prove this out, and then the mathematical computations in the uh, simulations proved it out as well. There are more details in the paper, uh, but there were instances where the, uh, there were no attacks. There were instances where attack was identified by the bad data detection algorithm. And they had instances where the bad data detection algorithm missed the attack because the attackers were also modifying the position data. And then the secondary attack detection was able to pick those up and uh, identify those attacks. So in conclusion, the authors effectively studied false data injection attacks on train-borne sensor data used in railway traction-powered systems. They believe this is the first study of its kind that considers traction-powered systems from a cybersecurity perspective. In their body of work, they leveraged Kirchhoff's principles to characterize the impact of false data injection attacks on traction-powered systems. They develop a technique to detect these attacks. They also formulated and analyzed efficiency attacks and safety attacks against traction-powered systems. They developed and proposed a global detection system that involves serialized bad data detection algorithm and a secondary attack detection algorithm. And they simulated these attacks and verified the susceptibility of traction-powered systems to false data injection attacks and that these attacks can be detected by a global detection system. I thank you for taking this much time to listen to me. 
I hope you found this interesting. Please post any questions on Piazza. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you. So in